Welcome Bruins fans, I hope you have been enjoying your offseason, because Lord knows I have. Not really. It sucks when you miss the playoffs two straight years in a row. However, various things to talk about during this offseason, so and consider this a special Bruins Recap Show offseason report. So the way this is going to work is that I'm going to have a couple of different topics. I want to keep this as brief as possible, if possible. So, I don't know, we'll, we'll put a timer somewhere on this. Uh, do it in post, of course. Minute and a half, uh, I think that'll be fine. We'll go through topic by topic, and um, yeah, we'll just uh, do it from there. So let's start with topic number one here, and that is how delusional... You Bruins fans are thinking you are going to get Steven Stamkos. Come on, guys. Are you serious? Were you serious? Did you think he was going to come to Boston in free agency? I mean, I, I'll give you his relationship with Claude Cod Julian, the, the amount of space that the Bruins had in the cap. But quite frankly, Steven Stamkos, he stayed with the Tampa Bay Lightning eight years, eight and a half million dollars. Uh, probably took a bit of a pay cut, but hey. I can't blame the guy. He went with the team that's going to give him the best opportunity to give him a Stanley Cup championship, and that is right now the Tampa Bay Lightning with a fantastic goaltender in Ben Bishop, some really young, talented forwards as your second scoring line, very good defensemen. It is a win-now team, and Steven Stamkos can appreciate a win-now team, and quite frankly, I can't argue that fact. I just can't believe so much hype with that 2 o'clock 98.5 The Sports Hub show. Uh, you know who exactly who I'm talking about. They had themselves a, a bit of a stamp coast in their pants for the past couple of days. But it was all for naught as Stephen Stamkos remains a Tampa Bay Lightning. So I think we're going to move on to topic number two. Topic number two, P.K. Subban, no longer a Montreal Canadian. And Boston fans all over the world are rejoicing. Yes, that is right. Montreal has traded away their star defenseman, P.K. Subban. And place of, um, well, the guy with the second hardest shot recorded in NHL history. And Nashville superstar Shea Weber. And by the way, that is 1.108.5 miles per hour. Point three, one, two, three, point three less than Zidane Chara, and that was in 2012. Lord knows what Zidane Chara's slap shot is now. It's probably like 90-something. Anyway, that was in 2015 that Shea Weber clocked in that 108.5. And this is a very interesting little trade because um, we all know P.K. Subban. He's got that flash, that flair. I really can't stand the guy as far as defensive goes. Um, he's very much more offensively minded. He's going to fly the zone, take the chance. Uh, not very well sound in their own zone, and he arguably has a leadership issue. He's not that big of a leader, and that's where Shea Weber comes in for the Habs. Shea Weber, a much better defensively minded defenseman, has a cannon from the point, can eat up big top five minutes. He's definitely going to be uh, a, a top guy. He might even get uh, an A or a C over there. Um, and they definitely needed it as once Carey Price fell down, the Montreal Canadiens, they fell apart last season. Uh, it was fun to watch as a Bruins fan, but this is a very interesting. You don't see a lot of one-for-one -one trades. Um, we'll get to another one-for-one -one trade later on in the show. Um, but yeah, this is definitely going to be a trade that helps both teams out. Um, both teams should see... A much better uh, production from these two stars in their respective environments. So we go on to our third topic, and Peter Shirelli is dumb. Dumb, 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 dumb. And he does not like the 2010 draft class, as he has traded away not only the number two overall pick in 2013, Tyler Sagan, but he has just officially this year traded the number one overall pick in Taylor Hall. And who did he trade him for? 23-year-old defenseman Adam Larson. 
Not a big return there if you are uh, an Edmonton Oiler fan. Um, you better hope that Adam Larson pans out and is going to become this top number one, number two defenseman, or this trade looks absolutely silly, and Peter Shirelli might go down as single-handedly one of the worst general managers ever for a, a silly trade like this. I mean, at least you you tr you, you picked up another left winger um, as to replace the talented left wing forward that is Taylor Hall. Uh, Peter Shirelli signed old friend to a seven-year, six million dollar per year deal in old Ledskate's Milan Lucic, who has um, usually gotten um, about I don't know, fifteen to twenty-five goals per year. And there was that one odd year where he scored thirty for Boston. Um, this, I'm sorry, Taylor Hall is just too good of an offensive talent to be trading him away for a 23-year-old guy who I'm not even sure is going to pan out yet in Adam Larson. Um, so this is going to be interesting to see what happens in Edmonton this year, but I doubt they're going to be any better than they were. Uh, they're usually perennial cellar dwellers. Um, they're arguably, arguably one of the worst teams every year, and that's just very unfortunate because uh, they do have some good talent. So we go on to our next uh, little topic, and we're going to talk about some free agency news that Boston pulled out. Three big ones, in fact, by Boston, um, as they have re-signed Tory Krug four years, $5.25 million per year. Uh, I cannot tell you how happy I am about this signing. Uh, Tory Krug is probably one of your best defenseman that you have that can move the puck, fly the zone, and he's going to eat up huge power play minutes for Boston, and that is absolutely what you need. Um, he might not be the biggest guy. He's not going to be physical. I, I know he's got his flaws, but he's definitely one, of, if not two, of the best offensive mind defensemen you have, um, arguably him, Colin Miller, and maybe even John Michael Lyles, who you did re-sign this year. Um, we'll get to the defense uh, in our next topic. Um, this one is a sneaky good pick. Very sneaky good. It's going to fly under the radar um, because the third name I have on this list outshines everything right now. Uh, but they have re-signed Anton Dr. Who Hudobin. Uh, two years, $2.4 million per uh, a very, very capable, talented back, uh, backup goaltender. Has a great working relationship with Tuka Rask. And that is, that is probably one of the big things is that you have a proven, capable backup. I mean, I know um, Jonas Gustafsson was pretty good last year, uh, but they didn't go to him as much. And for Christ's sake, Tuka Rask cannot be playing 80-some-odd games a year. Um, he's just going to work them to death. Uh, and it'll be rubbish if you make the playoffs. Um, you saw it happen last year where he was just not as good as he normally is towards the stretch. Uh, you really got to give that guy a break. And last but not least, they signed a veteran leader. A leader. That's what you need big time. You needed somebody to lead this team. He can play both center. He can play right. Uh, five years, $6 million per year. Uh, the numbers, I don't care. He's a proven veteran forward. David Backus, a little bit of sandpaper, a little bit of nasty, and just a great skill, versatile, tough, rugged, veteran leader. There's just so many things, good things I can say about David Backus right now. Um, I love the signing. I can't love it enough. I want to see him get an, an assistant, an alternate captain, an A on that jersey as soon as possible. Or even, um, I mean, I've, I've discussed multiple times taking the C away from Zdeno Chara. Uh, he's not the leader he once was. And you saw how successful it was in San Jose, where you took the, the captainship away from Joe Thornton, you gave it to somebody else, and that team really responded to the new leader. Um, we'll see what they do uh, with the forward situation, with the center situation, considering they signed Riley Nash. But we uh, got to move on to our next topic here, our final topic. And it's one that I think really is going to be a problem for this Boston team. 
and that is um, your defense core. This Boston defense core, I mean, you have right now on the left-hand side, Zidane O'Chara, Tori Krug, John Michael Lyles, Moro, Joe Moro. On the right, you have garbage like Adam McQuaid and Kevin Miller, which is arguably the worst signing of the C of this this um, season here. Um, God knows, signing, re-signing Kevin Miller to some outstanding, ludicrous deal like he did, it's not going to help your defense at all. I don't care how high you are on this guy. He is garbage. So what you need is you need either a big body defensive defenseman or a skilled right-handed defenseman if you can find it, which you're not. I mean, I have a few free agency options I'd like to go through here. Uh, so we're going to start with the two options I have first. Um, number one, Luke Shen. Luke Shen last year played for the Los Angeles Kings. Um, a solid defensive defenseman, big body, throws that body around like it's nobody's business. Uh, he can definitely give you what you are looking for in terms of getting in front of the net, moving people around. He basically a younger version of Dennis Seidenberg, if you want to put it that way. Um, other persons to note, also a right-handed shot is Justin Schultz. Uh, who played for Pittsburgh last season, uh, just came off a Stanley Cup championship, uh, so he's a proven commodity. Uh, these guys, they're, they're not goal scorers. I know it, you're looking for like a right-handed goal scorer. You, you're just not going to find it right now, uh, especially in free agency, unless you throw something ridiculous in a trade. Um, if you're looking on the left-hand side, I don't know why, uh, you have Matt Carl, who's 31 years old, out of Tampa Bay, who's still a free, unrestricted free agent right now, or as the time of filming this, he is. And last but not least, a shot-blocking machine, uh, Chris Russell, 29, from Dallas. I know um, there's been reports that the Bruins are high on him. I don't understand why. He's undersized. He's not as good as the other three I just mentioned. He's a left-handed shot, and you already have three talented left-handing shots, two of which you're going to be moving the puck with very well. So we'll see. We'll see what this Bruins team is going to do. I know a lot of people have talked about moving David Krejci, even though he has a non-movement clause still in his contract. Uh, we'll see. If anything comes out, I will try my best to put out something with my my view on it, um, but I hope that you enjoyed this uh, brief little discussion on some of the things that have happened during this offseason. Um, join the discussion, tweet me, at StanTheMan44, uh, we'll use the hashtag Bruins Recap Show, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. I will see you during the hockey season, hopefully it's a good one, hopefully we get back into the playoffs. Maybe even something will have to change. So, thank you. I will see you next time on the Bruins Recap Show.